Kenny here with Gardening Simplified. Today we're going to talk about the maintenance on your uh, garden tractor and some of the things you need to check to, to keep it in good repair. Here I've got a Mahindra 6000. A lot of this can apply to any of your equipment that you have as far as normal checks. Now, uh, on this particular one here today, we're we're uh, checking power steering fluid, which it's not uncommon on older tractors to start getting a few seeps here and there. So uh, you need to keep an eye on these things. If you get to where you start getting a drip to where you can actually see where it's at on some of it, you, you want to uh, go ahead and make that repair first. What we're going to do, we're going to check the engine oil. But what I want to do is talk about the dipstick a little bit. Now... All these are going to be different, but they're going to be basically the same. You've got a, a maximum, and then you've got another mark down there for the minimum. Now, whenever you uh, take and check this, you want it to be above this minimum mark that's marked on here. And a lot of times they won't say minimum and max on some of the older ones. They just have a low line and a, a upper limit line. Now these marks are designed for when the the uh, engine oil is warm. Now if it's cold, if you pull this out and it's cold like it is now and it's below the minimum line, then definitely you need to add some. Uh, but when it's warm, if it's in the middle of this range, uh, you're okay. If you start getting down to the minimum line, go ahead and uh, add some oil and make this up. You want to make sure, too, that you change your oil regularly. Now, on this particular one, my oil filter's right there. Uh, it's best to have a, a manual on your piece of equipment. If you bought it used, a lot of times you can go online and you can get these service manuals in PDF forms. So they'll tell you what the maintenance schedule is. Uh, but anyway, once you check that and, and this is all right, you want to put it back in. But one thing I want to stress too, before you pull this dipstick out, is make sure you wipe dust and debris away from it. You don't want it to accidentally uh, fall off in that hole while you have it out. And uh, wipe up any extra oil that you might have got on there while you was checking it. Also, now, you have dipstick. Now, my power steering uh, reservoir is right back there, and the little silver thing on top is where I check it. Now, you might have an older tractor that doesn't have power steering, or hydraulic steering, as this one has. Uh, so, you might not necessarily have to check that. Now, if you was low on oil normally, Right here we have an oil fill cap. Normally it's going to be located on the top of the engine. And it's the same process. Make sure you clean around this. Uh, if you have a whole lot of dust, you know, take a water hose, uh, spray it off, clean it off, and <laughs> make sure you don't get any of that dust in the engine because otherwise it's going to shorten your life. While you're under here, you want to go ahead and check your radiator. Make sure it's plenty of fluid. Now, tractors... Some of the newer ones might have reservoirs, but most of your older tractors, and this is a 2005 model, but most of your older tractors don't. So what you're going to have to do, and you want this to be cool when you check it, is uh, because when it's warm, it's going to have pressure on top of it. And you don't want to open this when it's hot and has pressure. You're going to get uh, scalded, you know, have some type of burn injury. But anyway, check this. Make sure your fluid is up there. Now... When it doesn't have a reservoir, it's going to be just a little bit down. If it's about a half inch down or something, don't worry about it. That's normal. Uh, but uh, it need, you need to be able to see it up there in the top of the reservoir. My air filters here. Now, some uh, engines have single filters. This has double filter like a lot of the newer ones where you've got a primary and secondary. Now, you want to take and inspect this at the same time uh, you can normally you can clean the outside filter you know if it gets a lot of dust on it you can clean it a little bit but make sure if you're using compressed air don't blow 
uh, that air real close to it that you might put a hole in it because otherwise that's going to let the the uh, any contaminants, dust and particles and stuff like that through it. I don't recommend ever blowing out your secondary filter because uh, that's your last, the say the last guard uh, for your engine so you don't want to get uh, any type of holes in it that you might not see from blowing it off so it's best if if it's dirty change it normally it lasts a whole lot longer than your inside now there is these filters are impregnated with a little bit of oil which helps it uh, catch particles better that's why I don't recommend cleaning dust for a long period of time after you clean a filter a few times from dust it's better to replace it that way uh, it's it's fresh and it has good oil on it to collect those particles now we also when you service these which I'm I'm over here checking my hydraulic fluid and right here is where mine checks and and I have this dipstick that goes down in here uh, to see where it is now I was a little bit low on this and it's been quite a few years since I've had to add any to it. It's it's not uncommon, like I say, to have little seeps that come up. But if you actually see drips or, or where you're seeing liquid oil or fluid uh, staying somewhere, you want to take and deal with that. But you can see two marks. Now, there's nothing that says what these two marks are. But it's the same as on your oil. The low one is your minimum level, and the upper one is your upper level. Now, you, you want to make sure it main, it's maintained between there, and it takes quite a bit of fluid from the lower one to the upper one to, to add. You know, it might be a gallon, two gallons, depending on how big your system is. But uh, what I want to stress is don't overfill it, because if you get up, if you fill it cold to the upper one, what's going to happen is when it warms up that oil level is going to rise and if it gets up into your moving gears it's going to start foaming so it'll cause problems with your oil to where you've got air in your oil and in fact it can be bad enough if it's full enough to where it actually comes out your vent and uh tractor vents are different places this one here is right up here underneath the seat this little thing right there is a vent and that's kind of why there's a lot of dust there because you hit, get uh, a really really fine mist over the years of oil and it's going to tend to draw dust there <coughs> but uh, anyway that's something to consider now periodically you're going to have to change your hydraulic filter and it's right down here now we can see right here on this hose you see how oil is drawn now this hasn't got to the point to where it's dripping but you can tell because it's kind of shiny and there's it's uh, collecting all the dust that it is being uh, there's beginning to uh, start a problem with it so when you have something like this you want to keep an eye on it uh, this uh, tractor does have a lift on it and usually if your fluid is low you can tell it if you start feeling uh, some jerking or something in your lift whether it be your three-point hitch on the back or whether it be your your hydraulic system that controls your bucket if you if it starts to get jumpy the chance is that the fluid is getting low and there's some air in there and you want to watch it while you're doing your maintenance you want to also uh, check all your alamite fittings or your grease certs uh, you want to go ahead and grease these periodically your your manual will tell you how often to do that uh, follow the recommendations and you want to check your tire pressure uh, and check your tire condition as you can see here on this particular tire there's cracking on it this tire is in a condition that it's going to need to be replaced in and probably this season but you want to watch for this because you, you don't want to end up uh, 
losing a tire at a time when you actually really need your equipment. The tire on this side, uh, it has been replaced because of that, you know, a few years back, tires, tires don't normally develop at all at the same time. So you want to uh, uh, watch them individually and, and not necessarily like on your car where you'd put on a set of tires or, or replace two tires at a time. I, normally on tractors and stuff, we tend to replace them once at, uh, one at a time. But you, you need your manual because a lot of your grease certs are hidden. They're, they're in a, a place where you don't see them. And when you get ready to grease these, make sure that you wipe the dust off the, of them because what's going to happen, if you don't clean around them, that dust is going to, uh, that dirt and debris is going to be pushed in to where you're uh, needing your lubricant as far as your bearings and such. And they're going to, it's going to cause a problem uh, for early failure. You also, not just so much the tip, but around the edge too, because on your grease gun, some of this will make contact. And as you're rubbing to get that grease gun on the surface of your fitting, you're liable to put some of that dirt there. So so clean around them good. Get you a little brush or something that you can, can clean that off. Or maybe if you have a pressure washer, go ahead and pressure wash those before you uh, service your, your grease fittings. Same thing on the back tires. You want to make sure that uh, you don't have any cracking. Uh, these are the original tires. If your equipment is kept indoors, where it's this one was early in its age, but it's it's uh, been left out uh, in the past years, it hadn't been stored inside, and the tires oh actually weather faster when it's kept out. So you want to be aware of that. You want to make sure, if possible, keep your equipment under cover where it's not exposed to the elements. Your equipment back here, if you have a brush hog, which this is an older beat up brush hog, you want to make sure that you lubricate the shafts and stuff on it. Now, they do have protectors. This, this one here is uh, definitely long past needing overdue uh, replacement now that keeps if you tend to mow tall grass and stuff it keeps it from wrapping around the shaft when we used to do hay and if we'd have to clean up an area well we'd have to make sure that was in good shape because uh, when you get that grass rolled up there it really does take up a lot of your time uh, getting it loose but some of these places too now you have place degrees back here and like I say the book is best because it'll show you all these some of these other places and this hasn't had the maintenance like it needs to and and a lot of tractors don't but you're supposed to oil some of these connections a little uh, squirt of oil you want to make sure that you take care of that uh, at the same time that you're maintaining it your lighting system now if you tend to take your tractor uh, off the farm down to another one of your plots or something like that you want to make sure your safety equipment's working you want to make sure that your your uh, lights and flashers work you want to make sure that you have your slow moving vehicle uh, sign that's required uh, like I say you just want to make sure that it's going to be safe and someone's going to see you when you're on the road I hope you uh, found this video helpful. I know it's not real in depth. Now I was a auto technician for 21 years so I'm uh, well familiar with equipment and there's a lot of in more in depth that uh, I'll go into later as far as actually changing oil uh, and different things like that. Some of the service that's there. But I want you to uh, be able to, some of these common things you don't you want to catch them before you end up having a big expense of having to to uh, pay for a major repair because of maybe you're, you hadn't done your maintenance uh, like it should be. One other thing I want to stress is in front of most radiators they have a fine screen that's uh, that you can pull out and this catches uh, usually it's uh, 
not so much dust but it's debris that's real fine like seeds and stuff like that keep keep them from clog clogging up your radiator now uh, when you do get those or when you do your maintenance it's just it's an easy process pull that screen out blow it off or tap it off and slide it back in its slot uh, anyway if you if you think this is helpful you want to see more of my videos uh, go ahead and subscribe hit that bell button so you'll be notified and also hit that like button that really helps my channel and uh, share this video for others happy gardening